Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at creating some metal text in Adobe Illustrator. This is the metal text we're going to be creating. So let's get started. Again, we are just going to be starting with a blank Illustrator document. There's nothing you need beside a blank Illustrator document. So file, new. Uh, I'm going to stick with 400 by 180. I believe that is the size I used for my metal text. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to zoom out one touch. That was just control and the minus button or command. Minus should do the trick. Um, first thing I want to do in layer one is just click on the stroke and click the little slash button. Hot key for that is just the, the forward slash just to get rid of the stroke. I just want to fill and I want that fill to be a pretty medium to dark gray. Maybe about two thirds of the way down, somewhere right around here. I want that gray. Hit OK. Grab a rectangle, and we're just going to draw out a nice little rectangle here, just as our background, if I can get it to. There we go. Of course, the easy way would have been to simply select it, click, <laughs> and set the width and height, 400 by 180. Hit OK, and grab the align panel. And we're going to align this uh, to the arc where let's try, and uh, center. And vertical center. There we go. Deselect to artboard. And there we go. We've got a nice gray background. Let's lock up layer one and create a new layer. All right, this is going to be the layer that has our metal text on it. So, first up, we need to grab the text tool, of course. We can give this text any color, really. I'm just going to give it white just for the sake of visibility here. Because we're going to virtually, okay, well, it's going to give us black. We can, give us, we can take anything more. Black's fine. I'm just going to type the word, type it, all caps. And uh, I'm going to push the font up to around 90. Looks pretty good. And I want to choose a different font. Now, I happen to know I have a font called 03s. Yes, it's called 03s. That's the font I'm going to be using. I believe it's a free font. I'm pretty sure it's a free font. I've, I've had it for so long. This is probably the first time I've even used it. So it's probably a free font. Uh, because I didn't even realize I had it. I was just kind of going through some of my fonts and came across and said, hey, that might work. So that's what I'm using. Uh, zero threes, uh, I've got it set to 90 points. I'm going to go window, uh, type, character, character palette. What I want to do in the character panel is, um, or palette panel, whatever you want to call them, I'm going to set the height of the letters to 75%. It's going to really kind of squash it. Um, I also, I don't want to apply any kerning. What I may do is up the size a wee bit more. Let's try 110. That's a little big. Let's push it down to 100. Oh, not 10. 100. Never knew it took so long to change the size of text. There we go. All right, 100 points. And uh, the, the percentage up to down, or vertical percentage here, is uh, 75%. So I'm going to close this character panel. I, I don't think I need that now. All right, now, what I want to do is convert this from text to something that can take a gradient. Right now, live text cannot accept a gradient. Um, let me see if I can try to put a gradient on it, but I, I can't. Only solid colors can be applied to text. So what I need to do is right click and choose create outlines. This says reduced that from being live type. I can no longer double click it and edit the text. But what I'm actually doing is I'm inside of the group. So I'm going to double click to get myself out of that group. So we have the group, but because we've broken it down to base shapes and it's no longer live editable type, we can apply a color to it. So I want to apply this black to white gradient, like so. I'm going to grab the gradient panel. I'm going to expand this a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I don't really need that that much room here. All right, with the gradient, what I want to do is have a light gray right here. I want to have a dark gray right here, so I'm just going to click to add a color stop. And I want to have a medium gray right here. So I'm going to choose this guy. Choose my color panel. Let me make him a light gray. Choose this one. Make it a much darker gray. Choose this one, make it more of a medium gray, maybe just before 50% gray. So right around 45% gray is fine. And then not quite black. Set the angle to, this is going to be 270. Okay, that brings the light gray up to the top. 270 is just 180 degrees from 90. Let me see if I've done 90. Light is at the bottom. I want the light to be on the top. So that's 270 or 
for the sake of explaining, we could just say negative 90 as well. Same thing. So we have this group of text. We are about to duplicate it many times. Um, so what I'm going to do is just select it, copy, control C or command C. And I'm going to paste it in place. The way you paste in place in Illustrator, it's not called paste in place, but it does the trick to edit, paste in front, or paste in back for that matter, but usually I paste in front. Um, you can see the, the hotkey, control F, be command F if you're on the Mac. Bam, we just paste it in front of it. I hit the little fly out arrow for this layer right here. You can see we have two groups now. I'm just gonna lock up the one in front and shut it off. So we just have this one in back now. The next thing we need to do is distort these letters a little bit. The problem is I need to distort them each individually so relative to the letter in front of them, they still look correct. Okay, if that made absolutely no sense to you, don't worry about it because it'll make sense in just a second. We need to select this text. Notice it's a group. I can click one letter and all of them get selected. I want to right click and just choose ungroup. They are now individual letters. Perfect. That's exactly what I need. I'm going to start with the T here and we're going to go filter, distort, free distort. Now, if you've never used the free distort filter before, it's pretty simple. You just, you know, distort just as if you were using the distort feature in Photoshop. However, you don't see a live update until you actually hit OK. So it can be a little hairy, but I'm just going to select this point and I'm going to drag it down toward the center, down and in. Now, if you click and nothing drags, just try clicking again. These black anchor points can be kind of picky about being selected and they can be kind of a pain in the neck sometimes. So don't worry about it. Just adjust it till it looks pretty uniform. It doesn't have to be exact, but just adjust it till it looks pretty uniform. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. Okay? And there we go. We just shrunk that down and back. Now we have to do it to each of the rest of these letters. However, we do not have to go in and, you know, do each one by hand. We can just go filter, apply free distort. Note the hotkey, control E. Just select this guy, control E, control E, control E, control E. By the way, that would be command E on the Mac. So now we have these letters sort of laying backward. I can select them all again and control G, command G, regroup them. All right, we got our group. They're all distorted. Wonderful. What I want to do is flip this gradient to being 90 degrees, not negative 90, just regular 90. So the light is at the bottom now. Cool. Unlock the top group of text and make it visible. All right, we're going to copy this text, paste it in front. Okay, so just control C, control F. Maybe command C, command F. Lock that layer, shut it off. We're gonna select both bits of text, or both groups of text. Select object, blend, make. All right, now I don't quite like what has happened. If we zoom in, you can see it just looks like an extra set of text has been set between these two. You can sort of see it. I want this to look like a smooth piece of metal fading back into those letters that we have set backward. So what I'm going to do is go Object, Blend, Blend Options, and I'm going to set the spacing to specified steps. I'm going to specify about 35 steps. That should be more than enough to give us what we want. Hit OK. And look at that. We've got a nice, smooth group of stuff running backward into our, uh, you know, our letters that are laying back, which is wonderful. And because we flip the gradient around, we also get this cool marbleized, you know, metal looking stuff. So that's good. We now have our metal text. Well, almost have our metal text. This next part we're going to do is simply, you know, adding some edges to the metal. And you can really spend a lot of time playing around with it, uh, getting all kinds of different results. You know, the text I did before for the demo of this video, um, you know, had some edging and things, but you know, you just kind of go in and you play around with it. So we're going to start with our group. What else? We can lock up the blend now just so it doesn't move. Turn this group on. And the first thing I want to do again is copy it. Command C, Command F to paste it in place or paste it in front. Shut it off, you know, lock it up, all that good stuff. All right, select this group now. We need to fill this with a solid color. So, oh, actually, I take that back. We don't need to fill it with anything. I want to get rid of the fill altogether. Um, what I want to do is apply a stroke. So what I just did was I selected the fill, and I just hit the slash button. And uh, you can do that up here. You can just select the fill and choose slash. 
I'm going to choose the stroke and I'm just going to click this little last color button to set black as the stroke color. The stroke color is really going to be irrelevant because we're going to change it. We're going to make it a gradient in just a minute. So I'm going to come down here to the stroke options panel and I'm going to up the weight to four points. Bam, four points. Huge stroke. So I'm going to select that group. And what I want to do is go object, expand. I don't want to expand the fill. There is no fill to expand. So I just want to make sure stroke is checked on. Fill should not be checked on. Okay. And now the strokes are shapes. You can see that this has automatically moved to fill. This is now a fill. So what I can do is come in here to swatches, grab that white to black gradient, and apply that as a fill to what should be my stroke. But you can't actually apply a gradient to a stroke. So you have to convert that fill to, or that stroke to a fill. So I've got this black to white gradient. I'm going to go gradient. I'm going to set the angle to 90, I believe is what I want. And um, now I'm going to lock that layer up. We're going to unlock this group and make it visible again. Copy it, paste it in place, nothing new. Lock it up, shut it off. We're going to grab this text. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit the slash button to get rid of the fill. We're going to give it a black stroke. This time we're going to make the stroke two points. So it's half of what that stroke just was. You can see, we got black. It's starting to look kind of interesting now. We're going to go up to Object, Expand. There's no fill to expand again, just Stroke, hit OK. And once again, go to the Swatches panel, grab that linear white to black gradient, go Gradient, and set the angle to 270 or negative 90. OK, just like that. Now, it's a little harsh, so what I want to do is select it, and I'm going to click the white, and I'm just going to make it not quite so white. I'm going to select the black, make it not quite so black, just to kind of ease up on the harshness of the effect. Even though metal does have a lot of harsh lights, um, you know, light really you know, likes to reflect off of it. And if you've ever seen a piece of metal, I know, you, I know you know what I'm talking about. So there we go. I'm just going to kind of ease it up a little bit, make it look more like that. Cool. Lock that guy up. And I'm going to unlock and show <clears throat> our original layer again. Select it, copy it, paste it in front. Lock it up, shut it off. We've got another copy of it right here. What we're going to do here is, um, again, get rid of the fill. We're going to apply another stroke. However, this stroke is going to um, just be a solid color, so we don't need to uh, expand it. So we're going to go to the stroke panel, and I'm going to set the weight to about half a point. And, uh, well, I'm going to grab the, the foreground color here, or the fill color. Just hit slash to get rid of the foreground color. Select the background color. I'm up in the color panel, and set it to white. And I'm going to set it to the inside of the shape. See, align stroke to inside. That's the one I want. Click away. And you can see it's really giving us a nice lightened up edge right in there. Matter of fact, we could make it a little smaller. Could make it 0.25 points, which actually I kind of like more. All right. Very cool. Now, this group we're actually going to drag on top of our other group that we have locked and shut off. Because when we turn that on, I still want to be able to see that. So what I need to do now is apply uh, a slight inner glow to this text. However, before doing so, I'm going to copy it once again. Now, this is where the second layer down or the second group down. Note that because this group in the front is that white stroke. So we're just going to lock that up so we don't accidentally mess it up. Copy, paste it in front. I'm going to drag this guy all the way to the front, lock him up, shut him off. All right, so here we got this bit of text. Uh, and I forget what I was going to do with it. Oh, yes. I am going to apply an inner glow effect, stylize, inner glow. Set the mode to normal or multiply. I'll just choose multiply. Color black. Let's preview it. Okay, we can see what it's going to look like. Uh, I do not want it to be blurred five pixels. Let's say three. And opacity, 45. You know what? Let's put it back up to five. And eh, let's do four. There we go. Four is good. Maybe lower the opacity a little more. Let's say 35. And, uh, looks good. So there we go. We just added a little bit of depth to the face of our letters. Let's do uh, something else to these. Lock up the you know the initial text layer. We still have this one here on top, right here. And this is our copy for now. We want to do one last stroke, and then we want to apply a sort of glow. So I want to copy this once more. Copy, paste in front. I'm going to drag one of these all the way to the bottom, even behind the blend. 
all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna leave him unlocked so I can remember he's down there. I'm gonna select this one all the way up front and I'm going to get rid of the fill. Again, I'm gonna set a white stroke to it. All right, let's check to see what it looks like here. The white stroke, we get a pretty solid white stroke. Um, I want to set this to about 0.75 points and object, we're gonna expand the stroke. There's no fill, just stroke. Okay, and we're gonna go swatches. We're gonna give it a black to white gradient again. However, what I'm going to do is simply move this white down to the center and put another black. I'm just gonna drag the black right down and drop it right on there. So we just have some white in the center. Matter of fact, I'm gonna take these diamond handles and pull it out so there's a little more white. Just some black on the edges. And set the angle to 90. Both edges are the same, though, so it doesn't really matter which end is up and which end is down. Okay, that's gonna give us a nice effect going right down the middle of our metal text. Okay, it looks like a light is shining off the front of it. Very nice. Lock that up. Okay, now finally to the layer in the back. Effect, stylize, outer glow. And this is just gonna be a black glow. The whole reason we're doing this is to sort of pop the text off of this gray background, give it some more contrast um, by, you know, applying a really dark contrast and color like black. It's gonna make our text look more contrasty. It's gonna make it look like it's popping off the background. It's gonna look a lot nicer. Up the opacity to 90. Blur about seven. Let's see what it looks like if we take it down to three. That three is definitely too small. 4.5. All right, I like 4.5. We're at 4.5. We may as well go five. And um, opacity at 90 is fine. So hit OK. And there we go. We got a nice black outer glow. All right, one last thing to do for our text. And that is, again, we got to find some of this text I can copy. I believe this is it. You can see we've got the little black, black to white gradient dot. That means we have a layer. Uh, an appearance or an effect applied to that layer. And I remember that I applied that inner glow. If I come up here to my appearance panel, I can see there is in fact an inner glow on this group. So I'm gonna copy this because I know that this is the, uh, the shape I need. I'm not really concerned about the glow or anything like that. I'm, I'm concerned about shape. Because what we're about to do is create a little shine. So I'm gonna choose white for my foreground color and just draw a white rectangle at the rectangle tool white rectangle just across, coming about halfway down the letters just like that. You can see I've got this path in my layers panel. Go to the transparency panel, double click this blank gray spot, create a mask, control F again will paste this right in place so you don't have to worry about moving it around. And because this is a gradient, it's got the gradient as a fill, it's gonna give us kind of an interesting effect on our, our light. You can see that the, the light is you know sort of faded in some areas and brighter in others. That's nice. We're still gonna lower the transparency to about 50. Mm, we'll give it a little more than 50, maybe 75. All right, that's good. And one last thing we can do is, well actually there are a couple last things we can do. One of which is, and I'm gonna get this over with real quick, Control F, pasting that text that we just used in the mask again out here. I'm gonna go to the appearance palette, click and drag that inner glow to the garbage can to get rid of that. I'm not concerned about that though. With this text, we can texturize the metal text underneath it. How can we do that? Well, let's apply an effect to it. Let's go to the effect gallery and just see what, what it holds in store for us. Zoom in a little bit on our text. You can see this is pretty nice, the spatter. I think I'll stick with spatter maybe, sprayed strokes. I'll go with spatter. And you can see if I increase the spray radius, it's gonna really start blowing the text apart. Smoothness is gonna try to pull it back together, but I don't, wanna, I don't want it to be very smooth. So I'm gonna increase the spray radius to around 10 to 12. Smoothness right there at four is fine. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And we now have that. I'm gonna set this, let's try soft light. Soft light looks pretty good. You can see it's just nice texturizing. We can probably actually, whoops, get away with setting it to just multiply. Yeah, there we go. And lower the opacity to something like 40. And there we go, we've got some nice texturization happening. Lock up those two layers. And the last thing we can do is come down here and grab the flare tool and we can just put a nice little flare right on the corner of the T just like that to top off our metal text here in Adobe Illustrator. That's it for this one. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you for watching.